In 1609, hearing of a Dutch spyglass power of three, Galileo the mechanic, almost overnight, improved it to this, power of ten. This is a faithful replica of his telescope, and it changed the course of history. He pointed this tube to the heavens, and that was the defining moment in the history of science. Galileo was ambitious, determined to sell it to the highest bidder. He came, like any tourist, to the Piazza San Marco to show off his big lens. And the Venetian senators scrambled to see it. The philosophers flocked to him. It was magic. In fact, some loyal followers of Aristotle thought it black magic and refused even to look. No, no, they said. Blasphemy, they said. The first blasphemy in the sky, the moon was not pure and white. It was rough and rocky as we know it. These are Galileo's drawings. There were black spots on the pure heavenly surface of the sun. Our pictures, Galileo's. And then, if the telescope was the turning point for science, Jupiter was the turning point for Galileo. Suddenly, he saw a little solar system, a sort of sun and moons going round it, and the whole thing moving. Not a proof, but a coherent system which worked. Copernicus was alive and well and living on Jupiter. In January of 1610, by chance, he turned to Jupiter, and he found the little points of light next to it. And we can follow it day by day when he sees that those little points of light are moving around and suddenly he realizes after about a week that wait a minute, these are being carried as little moons with Jupiter. Now one of the reasons people worried about the Copernican system was it seemed awfully silly that the Earth could be whizzing around the Sun and yet carry the moon and not have the moon get lost. As soon as Galileo realized that Jupiter was also moving, everybody agreed Jupiter was moving, carrying those moons with it, a great stumbling block against the Copernican system was removed. And Galileo immediately saw the power of that argument. He doesn't m make a big deal of it, but he says it in passing. This should put to rest the worries of those people who think the Earth can't have a moon with it. Now, this may not have converted the world into Copernicans, but it certainly converted Galileo, because up to that time he was probably just a timid Copernican, if at all, and suddenly the wonderful things he found with the telescope required new patterns of thinking.